Hey everybody, Matt from MasterSketchup.com and recently a friend of mine asked me to draw an addition for him. It's a very small addition. Since I used to do carpentry, I said, sure, why not? But I thought it would be cool to record my screen as I was modeling it in SketchUp so you can see like exactly you know, each step that I take along the way to set up uh, SketchUp and you know, really the whole process. So what I did is I recorded the whole screen and I'm gonna play it fast forward to you and just kind of talk you through each step of the way of what I did um, to hopefully help you out in, in your thought process on how you approach uh, a similar project. So the first thing I did was I, I actually went to his house and we took some measurements and I just put it on paper. So I basically just took some rough measurements like this and you know, you just wanna make sure you get your main widths and lengths of the house get a good footprint but then you also want to get some heights and um, dimensions for the rafters uh, the soffit details things like that so the more dimensions that you can capture early on the easier it's going to be uh, once you bring it in the SketchUp alright so you can see we got a blank SketchUp file open and I usually start with um, a rectangle on the ground just to give myself a reference point for whatever I'm drawing. So um, I'll, I'll make the rectangle, turn it into a group real quick. Um, the calculator you see there, I'm just adding up some of the dimensions that I had uh, written down on the paper. Just some of the widths of the house. I didn't get some full dimensions. So and so I start out with a rectangle and with the dimensions of the the full size of the house and then using the tape measure tool I'll make these guides to um, you know to finish off the shape and then uh, you can see I jump right in with uh, the, the sill plates and the floor joists and you know sometimes you know when you when you look at those floor joists you would think that I would use components for those since they're all the same size but sometimes I find that I catch myself trying to make a change to one joist and you know unintentionally it changes all the other ones I know that you can go to you know select a unique component um, just for that one but sometimes it's it's uh, pretty easy to forget so um, you know sometimes I, I do different things all the time sometimes I'll just I'll just use groups for simple things like studs and whatnot now this thing I'm, I'm building right now is actually like a story pole so I'm just I'm I know what my ceiling height needs to be and then I'm adding my sheetrock and uh, ferron and my uh, ceiling joist height so I'm just I just made that object that way I can reference it now with my uh, my studs. And th this was one situation where I used uh, groups for all the studs, and then I realized you know what I, I want to make a component for for the main stud, and I'll label it the main stud um, uh, height. That way I can use that throughout the project. And then once you get this, once you get one wall built, you make a group out of that, and then just copy that group over because all your walls are going to be different. So you don't really want to use a component for that. So now I'm adding in my top plates, and this is why I decided to use a component for the main studs. Is now I can make the changes to one of the studs, and all the other ones will will be if, you know make that change as well. So here I have a template just for the rafters. So you notice I kind of use, you know, these temporary objects just to help reference, you know, for the for the inferencing system within SketchUp. It's nice to have other objects that you can reference off of. So I'm creating one rafter and making components uh, from that you know getting the spacing and everything and then I'll, I'll group all of them together 
and take that group, make a copy of it, turn it inside out for the other side. And then this is the ridge, and I'll just make the change to the one of the rafters, and all the other ones will change as well. So I can delete that temporary story pole, and you know we have our basic shape for the for the addition. It's taking shape already. Actually, I lied. This isn't this isn't the actual addition part of the house. This is an existing part of the house that I wanted to detail out uh, so you can see exactly how the addition attaches to it. So I just added all the ceiling joists and now I'm adding some dimensions on the inside of the of the house. So in about an hour's time uh, this is what I came up with and you can see that I, I basically just I created the outline of it I created the outline of the addition and some of the main house and I wanted you to notice how I structured some of the groups here so a lot of the main components are grouped together so what what's nice about that is you can select it and hide the different parts and you can see I can go a little further and probably group all these blocks in there as well but and then what I did is I just used a regular rectangle and push pulled it up and sat down and went over okay where do you want these walls stuff like that so it's a great way to to visualize layout of walls and um, then once we get the final plan figured out I'll go ahead and finish uh, creating the studs for these walls and I'll I'll fully detail the electrical windows doors all that stuff and create a completed set of uh, construction drawings so I hope you've enjoyed this quick look on you know kind of a quick and dirty way that I've uh, used SketchUp I know I've made mistakes and whatnot along the way but uh, I wanted to just hit record and see what happened and just share with you my thought process as I went along so if you'd like to learn more about SketchUp don't forget you can always visit my website at mastersketchup.com